Today, more than ever, one of the biggest challenges artists still face every day is to be heard in a crowded world. But what if the world you live in became completely silent? For deaf and hearing impaired people, it is a constant battle to speak out in a society where your disability becomes your label. But innovative ways deaf artists that are creating work in response shows that it is possible to communicate even without saying a word. Dance is a universal language which everyone can access, no matter how little you can hear. Chris Fonseca lost his hearing when he was only two years old, but this did not stop him becoming a professional dancer, communicating to others through his body. It's like my instinct. It's never too late to follow your dreams. Through British Sign Language interpreter Simone Rickard, Chris is able to explain his work. Deaf can't afford to pay. So now the funding's gone, it's, there's less opportunities in the arts, artistic, creative world for deaf. And it's difficult for them to carry on. But I believe that there's always ways. You have to try and find the opportunity. There are opportunities out there, you have to try and find them. You have to do like a creative networking. Ask around, there's opportunities there. Despite some difficulties, Chris has successfully performed internationally and recently featured in Smyrna's We Are Open campaign. When it comes to music, though, there is more than what our ears pick up. Let's make music for love, not war. Let's make. Find some performers are deaf artists who start by writing the lyrics and then they interpret the lyrics into sign language. They can't hear the words, but they can feel the beat through the vibrations. Kevin Walker, aka Sign Kid, deaf music producer and writer, is the artist behind the hard work. Yet, as strong a passion as it might be, it can turn into a struggle if the right equipment is not provided. The problem that I've had in terms of barriers is, you know, the equipment. It's always a problem in terms of what's been provided. The equipment is sometimes low quality. I don't always feel confident to sort of stand and perform if the music sound doesn't, isn't really good. That's, a dif that's the difficulty. I would always want people to provide high quality, good sound, something that I can really feel the beat in, and that's better for me. That's what I would really like. In the last eight years, more than £56 million of arts funding theatre, music and dance has been cut by local councils in England. Since 2012, the number of working age deaf and disabled people out of jobs increased from 53 to 75%, which means that one in three have a job. And when it comes to art, there are even less opportunities. Data Fest, a cutting-edge disability-led arts organization based in Liverpool, believes that deaf and disabled people are socially, economically and culturally disadvantaged. The arts can promote social change, highlighting inequalities and injustice in this uncertain climate. But without the right support, the role of deaf artists is still under threat. There is a, a, a horrid way people see the support we need for sign language interpreters as being too expensive. So I think it's almost the first threat to um, any cut is going to be to sign language interpreting. Um, so I am worried about how that's going to affect the future. Um, exposure of deaf artists particularly, because if they're not going to get the support to do the training, they can't train as artists. And very few people have got the skills to train without, uh, be an artist without the training. The number of disabled organisations have witnessed a one-third fall since 2015, making the future of the disability arts sector unstable. However, government cuts are not only threatening the creative side of the deaf community, the lack of communication and support on a daily basis seems to be the main concern. It must be very frustrating to live in a world where you find it difficult to communicate. It's a basic human need. Simone Rickard has been working as a British Sign Language interpreter for almost 16 years, experiencing firsthand how hard it can be for a deaf person to cope with simple needs. If you're going to talk about disabled people as a group, the, the reason why I would single out um, deaf to have a particular need um, is because of the communication. When you can't, if you're a wheelchair user, you can still use a telephone. The fact that you can't use a telephone just instantly means no access. I mean, even emergency services. 
The acting sector, instead, is loyally witnessing progress in integrating the factors and actresses in the hearing world. At the recent World Festival at the South Bank Centre, the factories Nadia Nadaraja worked hand-to-hand -hand with hearing peers in the Octavia Poetry Exhibition, challenging and breaking barriers. For me, um, it's not necessarily it's a barrier, it's a challenge for them. It's not a challenge for me, you know. I, you know, I see myself the same as a hearing person, you know, the only difference is I can't hear. Really, it's the challenge that's for them. I have to accept, accept it, that they won't accept the challenge as an organisation. You know, if they want to see shift and change, and they have to accept this challenge, you know, deaf people can act, they can learn and develop. And um, so at the moment, it's a very slow start uh, to try and open these doors. I'm here in front of the Art Council England headquarters in London. Despite the ongoing access barriers deaf artists still have to face in the art world, the Art Council England 2018-2022 investment project could make a difference. With a budget of four hundred nine million pounds available each year, organizations such as Data Fest can bring much needed sustainability to deaf culture. But as art funding has been cut, the level of competitiveness is high, making it difficult to predict whether or not they will be successful. Chiara Brambilla for City News.